All right, in today's video, we're talking about how to clean the evaporator coils on an AC unit. Um, I am gonna be spending a, a little bit of time describing what the evaporator coil does and stuff. If you want to fast forward straight to when we start cleaning the coil, you can go right there. Otherwise, let's get into it. Mechanics for non-mechanics. All right, so your, your, your air handler might look like this, okay, hanging in the garage. Um, you see it has a plenum. It's this box right here, okay, that's an AC box. There's duct board. This is made of duct board, and it connects to your air handler. And then the duct work goes into the duct board, this box, this plenum, okay? Um, your AC, your air handler might look like this, or it might be in an attic, or it might be in a closet, okay? But this concept that I'm going to show you is the same for any of those situations. So you're still going to have air coming through um, your return side, okay, going through your return into your air handler and then out your supply side. You got a return side and a supply side, okay? Now, if you have a filter rack, okay, this is where you would put a filter, okay, then you're gonna know, okay, that's my return side. So you have a coil, an, uh, an evaporator coil, that separates your return side and your supply side. There's a coil that's maybe at an angle, okay, or it's an A-frame coil, and it's separating the two. On one side, you'll have room temperature air so say 78 degrees or whatever it is in your house. On the other side and going out to your supply vents, you'll have something that's about 17 to 20 degrees colder, okay? If you wanna know how to do a temperature difference, click this video right here. So you have, again, return side and supply side. Now, whatever side your filter is protecting, okay, Re with the filters right here, or it might be in your house, okay? That's the return side. That's the side that is sucking, like a vacuum. There's a motor right here, motor, and it's, um, it's sucking air in, your return side and then it's blowing it out your supply side okay so your evaporator coil is very important to keep clean that's why we change our filter once a month to protect the coil because if the coil gets dirty which might be your situation right now an AC company is going to charge you hundreds of dollars to pull it out and clean it now, the only true way to clean your evaporator coil is to pull it out and clean it, okay? But that's hundreds of dollars to do, okay? It's gonna cost you, say, six, seven, eight hundred dollars for an HVAC company to do that, okay? So they do have other options that can help, um, but really the only way to clean your coil is to pull it and clean it which is a huge process you got to cut the line you have to pump all the refrigerant into the condenser or recover the refrigerant um, cut these copper lines um, once there's no refrigerant in the system pull the coil completely out take it down to the um, you know end of the end of the driveway clean it out okay then reinstall the coil and the, when you pull that coil out you can also cause a freon leak so it's not ideal that's why you want to change your filters clean your filters but uh reinstall the uh, uh evaporator coil resolder the lines in so that everything's in there um you know uh pull a vacuum um and then uh bring the refrigerant back into the system either by you know pumping up the system again or by re-putting freon into the system so it's about you know three four five hour job um 
So highly recommend you change your filters, keep protect your coil, keep your, keep your coil clean. Okay, but what can you do, okay, if you do have a dirty coil? So this is again is our return side plenum, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray, okay? We have an Avap foam, no rinse. I'll put a link in the description section or something comparable. Uh, if you can find no rinse, that's going to be better, okay? Um, and we're going to spray this onto the coil. What no rinse means is you don't have to rinse it off. So a lot of the coil cleaners, um, you, uh, you have to spray it on there. It will foam up and then you take water and spray all of that chemical off of the coil. So the nice thing with the no rinse ones is you just spray it on there, okay? It'll pull, it'll pull out a lot of that dirt and gunk. And then whenever you're done, you turn the unit on and the water will naturally condense off of it and you don't have to worry about cleaning it out with water. Just make sure whatever chemical that you use on the coil that it's okay for your coil. Your coil could be a, a an aluminum coil or it could be a copper coil. Today, the newer stuff is generally going to be aluminum coils, okay? So just make sure that whatever you buy that it's okay for, you know, aluminum coils or okay for uh, copper coils. Of course, if they sell it, it's generally going to be okay, but just always make sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut a hole Okay, I'm gonna show you how AC people do it, okay? We're gonna cut a hole in this plenum. Again, this is duckboard, okay? And, um, and then we're gonna take a look at the coil itself. So first, shut the breaker off. Hey, if this video has been helpful for you, just quickly give us a like on the video and go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so we can reach a larger audience with these helpful videos and as well as let you know when any future videos uh, come out. Thanks so much. Let's get back into it. So now what we're going to do, I have a duck knife here. Okay. Again, I'm going to show you, I don't recommend you do this at home. Okay. I know how to use this. So, um, but I'm just showing you how HVAC contractors or techs will do it. So I'm going to cut at an angle, okay, downward on the high, on this high side. I'm going to cut a hole. We're cutting like a window, okay, so that we can see, so that we can see how our coil looks. I'm cutting it at an angle, okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to rotate, rotate it this way. And again, I'm cutting it at an angle downward now. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And you don't have to cut it this whole big, but you do want to be able to reach your hands in there if you're going to try and spray this stuff on. Now, if you don't have a plenum, if it's just drawing air from the bottom, then you don't have to do this. You just spray, you'll just spray it at the coil, but we want to be able to access the side of the coil that's being protected by the filter. So here we go. We're gonna, again, cut at an angle. Downward, try and keep it straight as much as possible. I know mine is not pretty, but it's hard holding a camera, okay? And then finally, again, at an angle, we'll cut this side out as well. And so now what we've done, we've made a window where once we finish cleaning, we will be able to just pop it right back in and keep it moving. All right, so that is our coil, okay? Now that's that coil is just slanted. Yours might look a little different. It might be an A coil, but that is our evaporator coil. Now you can see it's not really dirty, okay? It looks pretty good. It's shiny, it's got some metal to it. This this unit is very old. It's, I don't know, 12, 13 years old and it still doesn't have a bunch of dirt, gunk, other stuff. So that's a good thing. But if yours did, if yours does, if yours has a bunch of dog hair, you know, and it's just really dirty, then you have to clean it. So again, the power's off, okay? Make sure the power's off. You don't wanna be sucking a, a bunch of air in here while you're doing this, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray this, 
okay? We're gonna shake this thing up. So before you clean it, if you have a bunch of things on there, like you might have insulation on there or just large blocks of hair, just pull that stuff off first, okay? And then, you know, stuff that you can reach with your hands, again, if you're gonna do it, I would wear long sleeves, okay? So that if you your arm does touch the insulation, the insulation is not gonna get on your skin too much. You wanna avoid that insulation getting on your skin. For me, I deal with it all the time, so it's not a big deal. But I even I try, if I'm doing duck work or working with duck board, I try and wear long sleeves so that that stuff doesn't irritate me. Couple quick things of caution. Uh, the coil cleaner, it does have sort of a sm certain scent to it, okay? So just be wary of that if you are, be aware of that. If you are sensitive to smell, you know, as it goes through the air, it'll eventually start to subside, but you are gonna have some smell, a little bit of scented smell or something when it first goes through the system. All right, so this just says shake thoroughly, okay? So, you know, 30 minutes, thir excuse me, 30 seconds to a minute shake this thing up real good okay and then it says you're gonna close you're gonna uh basically put it all throughout the coil okay now this is duck board okay so this is very itchy if it gets on your skin so again i don't recommend you doing this but this is how hvac technicians do it all right so we're gonna spray it all across the coil. And again, the only true way to clean a coil, you gotta pull it, you gotta have it cleaned. You know, you might be saying, well, why can't I just do this to clean the coil? The coil is about three or four inches thick. So when you're spraying there, you're maybe getting, you're maybe penetrating a little bit of that but you're basically just hoping to get the surface stuff off of there because some people's uh, coils are so dirty that they just freeze up like every day, okay, because their coils are so bad. So this can help to prolong that a little bit, but it's not going to give you, it's not going to clean three to four inch thick coil. It's not going to penetrate that whole coil. So that, that's why that's why the only true way to do it is you gotta pull it and clean it. However, this can help you as well to at least, you know, buy you some more time while you save up to get a new unit or something. Okay, so that says to apply and then give it a few minutes, five, five, 10 minutes, then come back, look at it. If it looks better, okay, but still a bunch of junk, just really just spray that whole coil up and down or left and right and then come back 10 minutes just it, plan on using the whole can okay because hopefully this is only something you're going to do one time and then not again right so um use the whole can if you need to use another can okay um but just check it periodically every 10 15 minutes make sure the unit's off again and then you know there like i said there is a point where you're not really going to be able to get not going to be able to do any better you're not going to have it shiny clean from this spray okay but you might get off a lot of the junk that's on the surface all right so we have our coil here we're now we're done we put the stuff on now we have our window that we can put back again you might want to wear gloves you might want to wear gloves when you touch this insulation for me i'm used to it it's not a big deal but um we wanna put this window back in, okay? It's gonna fit nice and easy, but it's not just gonna stay there, okay? Once that air starts blowing again, uh, it could fall out. So we have to tape it, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get this, we're gonna get a spray glue, okay? This is spray and bond. So I'm gonna spray and again, this also is gonna have a little smell to it. So if you're sensitive to it, you might, I don't know, you might not wanna use it, but this is how to properly do it, okay? So we shake it up, okay? And we're gonna spray it on these seams where we're putting it back in. And the way spray glue works is you need to give it it needs to needs a little bit of time 30 seconds to a minute to get um sticky okay and then we're going to do the same thing we're going to spray the 
the uh, four corners right here, the four corners around that are gonna be sticking there. I gotta put the camera down to do that. All right, so I sprayed, I sprayed all four sides around, okay? Now keep in mind that that spray glue, you might wanna spray it outside somewhere because if it goes past the, if it goes past this, it'll get onto whatever's behind this thing, okay? So we have this sprayed, we waited about 30 seconds to a minute on each one. Now we're gonna put it back Okay, get it, get it right where you want it. Okay, and then stick it in. Fits nicely. Now we're gonna use the silver tape here. This is my favorite that I use all the time, okay? I will put this tape or a similar tape in the link to the description section. But now we're gonna use silver tape to um, tape around these edges, okay? Now what you can also do, I use this hard cast tape, so it's a stronger tape. But if you don't have that, if you just have regular silver tape, you just spray, okay? Spray again with the same spray, the spray glue. Spray it on this seam here all around and then give it a minute and then you'll use just the regular silver tape. I'm using this kind of mastic silver tape, so I'm, I don't need to do that. Now, when you put the silver tape on, you're gonna use a squeegee. That's what we call it in the business. Um, but it's just a plastic squeegee here, okay? And you want it to be on there nice and good, okay? So you put it on there firmly. All right, so here we go. I got these two sides down. These are my other sides. Squeegee them nice and good. Turn the uh, breaker back on, and that is how to clean evaporator coils on your AC unit. Um, please uh, like the video, subscribe so we can let you know about all of our videos, hit the bells for the notifications. It also helps us reach a, a larger audience with these helpful videos. A uh, comment in the comment section, let me know uh, uh, if you ever done this before or not, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Peace. Mm -hmm.